Merry Christmas. Yes. The first of many for some. Yeah. <laughs> um, any prayer requests or any testimonies tonight? Yeah, Peter. Uh, oh, I'm just kidding. I'll let Sally go first. Um, <laughs> I, I forgot to mention this um, a while back. I don't remember. I honestly don't remember if we played prayed with James' grandma or not. But James' grandma had type 2 diabetes. Um, and anyway, the doctor told her that she no longer needs to take her medicine and everything, that her blood sugars look good. And, uh, you know, to us, we know she's healed with type 2 diabetes, but the doctors, of course, don't believe that you can deal with that stuff. So, anyway, she, she doesn't have to take any of her diabetes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes, I would just say. I just wanted to everybody. Keep Tammy and Dan in the prayers. Dan's got some uh, breathing issues going on now and that. Still fighting with keeping things up God underneath the camera because that's where we're living. And it, it's this cold, it's a battle. So okay. just remember that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They need a couple of uh, days of temperatures above 15 degrees in the quarter slab so they can get on and start with that spark. Okay. Okay. So 15 degrees or more, Lord. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking an audio with the jet stream and telling it it has to move north and bring model air. Right. Or, <laughs> <you're even laughs> that. Someone showed the map. They're like, this purple stuff, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> That's Canadian air. Go back where you belong. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, I just wanted to share. I know that I had talked about Mariah, the young girl that. Um, had cancer is still cancer free and she had her picture at Christmas and she just was thankful for life that was her gift Praise from God. the Lord this year so yeah, yeah. cancer free 10 years old I know it's pretty good. Uh, anyone else to, yeah Tim Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, that you are faithful, Lord, when we come to you, Lord, when we trust in you, trust in the finished work, Lord. Lord, we speak, Lord, Jesus. Lord, we pray for Dan and Tammy tonight, Lord, in their situation, Lord, that you would provide, Lord, a new home, Lord, keep their home safe, keep their home working in this cold weather, Lord. Surround them with the warmth and the fire of your love, Lord. And let that come together quickly, Lord. Yes, and we pray in remembrance of those that we've lost this year, Lord. Those who are with you, Lord, that are no longer with us, and our hearts miss them, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord. So thankful, Lord. That you are good, Lord. That you are faithful, Lord. Worthy to be praised, Lord. As we gather tonight, Lord, meet with us, Lord. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord, as you have your way in this service tonight, Lord. Renew our minds by the hearing of your word. Fill our spirits with hope and peace and love as we just enjoy being in your presence and being in fellowship with them among our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. Continue the work that you've set out for this body, Lord. That as this year ends and as we look to the next year, Lord, fill our hearts with hope, with vision, Lord, for the work that you have set out for each of us and for us together as a body to do, Lord. Give your people vision, Lord. Focus, Lord. 
for the next step. That's all that you need to tell us, Lord, is the next step and that we trust that you know the path, Lord, that you know the way, Lord, you know the destination, you know the end from the beginning, Lord. All we need to do is trust in you for the next step, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you never lead us astray, that you never leave us, you never forsake us, Lord. And in this season of rejoicing and of family and friends, we remember those who are lonely, Lord, those who are hurting, those who are searching, those who are lost, those who the world have rejected. Let them find comfort and peace and hope in you, Lord. Give us the eyes to see the hurting hearts that need to hear of your truth the message of grace that changes everything. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be with us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a reminder, if you brought a cell phone tonight to silence it or turn it off till after the service. New Year's Eve gathering. I already forgot what time I said. Did we say seven? Seven. <laughs> Seven o'clock, Sunday night. It's going to be a cold one, so feel free to bring a blanket <laughs> or snuggles, whatever you guys want to bring. We are going to have a game night here at the church for anybody that wants to gather. Seven o'clock, uh, we'll have homemade hot chocolate and some treats and games for anybody who wants to join us. Praise the Lord. Eastern Gatehouse Prayer, my favorite Friday night of the month. Yep, yeah, we're pressing through. We're pressing through. Uh, yes. Things are already happening. Um, like I said, Sunday, we <clears throat> we can't sell ourselves short. I believe that this body of uh, uh, gatherers um, has an, had an influence on this situation in Jerusalem uh, with the uh, with the capital and the uh, of it being a capital plus uh, moving our embassy to Jerusalem, now Guatemala moving to Jerusalem, um, and those in office, uh, this is first time in years that I've never heard so many people say Merry Christmas. Um, prayer makes a difference. Amen. Amen. We're not back off, we're pushing. Amen. And Winter Jam, January 26th. Yeah, we got the user going, and uh, any young adults, any older young adults, <laughs> any younger old adults. Um, <laughs> We have to. We get a bus. Uh, <laughs> we are. We are ready. We'll be going. I got a big trunk. I can fit at least three in the trunk. No. I'm just kidding. All right, uh, Ron. You want to come take an offering for us tonight, please? Here over. I 
need that angle. I need to go like. Sorry, people. Hallelujah. Okay, Sarah. Uh, mute my acoustic or mute the acoustic, please. Uh, Twenty copy. Go on. I do this. Got the alto section solidified. <laughs> okay. Power numbers. Hallelujah. Thank you. Power. <clears throat> good meter. How's your mic? How's your mic? It's good. It's good. Okay. I'll need uh, this mic at number 13 and uh, four monitor. Uh, one, four monitor, one, four monitor, one, four monitor, one, 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 check, 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 a little more, a little more, a little more, check, 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 Peter, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Okay, bring me up more, it's like match Peter, check, 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 right there. Woo! Man, I feel like I'm right field. <laughs> how you doing, Bill? Can you hear us? Okay, here's now. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we love you tonight. Praise God. We're so grateful, Lord, for your abiding presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings, for all of your blessings in this past year, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness so that we can look forward to the new year knowing that even greater things are to come. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the more we acknowledge you, the greater your blessings flow. So Father, we just thank you tonight for your precious presence, for the love that we feel from you. In Jesus' name. And everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. <laughs> praise the Lord. They're shooting at me. I haven't even started yet. Praise God. They're trying to kill me. <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. And thank you all, worship team. Great as always. Praise the Lord. And I am going to be brief tonight because we're supposed to have snow by, uh, I think they said around 8 o'clock or so. And uh, for those of you traveling west, which would just be one, <laughs> two, two well, uh, technically one vehicle, yes, that's what I was thinking. Uh, uh, it might be a good thing to get ahead of it. Not that it's going to be a lot of snow, but. You know, when it is snowing, it's a little more difficult to get around and drive and all that stuff. So, with that in mind, praise the Lord. So, everybody have a great Christmas. Amen. Praise the Lord. I didn't have to do much shopping. Uh, Sally does almost all of it. I just do a little bit. Picked up a few things here and there and got some things for her. But I'm glad that uh, when I was a kid, we I had to go downtown. You know, I mean, everything was downtown. There wasn't any, there weren't all the malls and stuff like we have now. And so you had to go down and, and you had to get elevators. You know, you were always cramped in these things. And of course now, even when you go to the larger department stores, they almost all of them have escalators, so you don't have to. And I'm grateful for that because I, you know, elevator music is awful <laughs> on any level. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you might want to write that down. Praise the Lord. So everything ought to go up from here, right? <laughs> praise the Lord. That's my intention. Anyway, praise the Lord. God bless all of you for being here. Amen. Uh, let's go to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Praise the Lord. We we're talking about Sunday about the appearing, you know, the, 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 the ever coming Jesus. And, uh, and when we understand that, that he does appear through us, that he does become manifested in human flesh over and over, that we can then begin to operate the way he does, the way God does. Amen. And that needs to be our focus because we have a tendency to always get caught in the flesh. And by that, I don't mean bad behavior and all that. I just mean human behavior, human thinking, human way of responding to things. And, and uh, that doesn't get us very far. We need to realize that first and foremost, we are spirits. And it's by the spirit that we're able to do anything of any significance as far as impacting this world and the people that are in it, praise the Lord. Because, uh, you know, our flesh is all about seeing and touching and tasting and, you know, and that just gets in the way of what God really wants to do, praise the Lord. So 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4 says, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Praise God. So the first thing we have to understand is that the, the promises of God, we, we understand those promises with our heart or with our spirit. Amen. Our minds just can't get around them. If you, you think about the promises of God in here, your brain just can't deal with it. Amen. It'll always look for excuses, it'll always look for reasons why it can't happen, why it can't work, amen. Our natural minds are just too small, and the promises are just way too big. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Praise the Lord. Now that confidence or faith, that's an interchangeable there, has to be in our hearts. And that's what links us to a reward and to receiving the promise. Praise the Lord. Now look, in life, the, the typical way that, that we operate is we believe for something, we're, we're praying for something. Anybody ever have a disappointment? It didn't come to pass when you thought it should or, or as quickly as you might wanted it to, or it turned out differently than you had expected. Amen? Well, when you have expectation and it's frustrated, generally, as far as the natural world is concerned, that leads to disappointment. And disappointment that isn't dealt with. And here's the problem. You can't just be disappointed. You've got to deal with it. You've got to believe through the disappointment. Or you'll never get to where it is you're trying to get to. Because life will throw stuff at you and the enemy will put things out there that will deny whatever God has put in your heart, whatever the promise is that God has laid on your heart or that you have found and that you're trying to receive. Amen? So a disappointment will come. And if you don't deal with it with faith... If you don't deal with it with confidence, amen, that it's not the final word, it just happens to be something that's going on at the moment, then that will lead to discouragement. And when you have discouragement and you don't deal with the discouragement, that leads to despair. That leads to hopelessness. And that's what happens to so many Christians is because they don't, they've never learned how to deal with disappointment. How many have been disappointed? Amen. Over and over it happens in our lives, in the natural, all the time. Well, the enemy tries to always suck us back into the carnal or back into the natural realm. So if we have disappointment and we don't deal with that disappointment with confidence in God, with faith, amen, then we're going to be discouraged. And if we don't deal with that, then we end up in despair. We end up hopeless. And you can never get to the reward by being hopeless. You can't get there by just allowing disappointment and discouragement to dominate in your life. Look at James uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That temptation is what we're talking about here. Disappointment. You're tempted to not believe what God has promised, right? Because things aren't playing out the way you thought they would. When you thought they would. Amen. So it says count it joy. Whenever that happens. You've got you've to count it joy. It's like when David was uh, in despair. He said I will love the Lord. Now he probably didn't feel like loving the Lord. But he made a choice. He made a decision that I will love the Lord. Those of you that are married. There are times when you choose. <laughs> praise the Lord. To love your spouse. Or your children. Or your siblings or whatever it might be. Why? Because you don't really feel like it at the moment. You know, they've done something, they've irritated you, whatever. So you have to make a choice. Amen? And that's what we're talking about here. When you fall into these temptations, when the enemy comes and tries to discourage you, you've got to make a choice. And that choice is, I'm going to joy in the Lord. I'm going to believe. I'm going to keep my confidence in God. Knowing this, and why? Because I know this, that the trying of my faith works patience. Praise the Lord. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So the circumstances are contrary to what you're believing for. You need patience. Praise the Lord. Patience, that word patience, if you look it up, it says cheerful endurance. <laughs> you count it all joy, right? You're not feeling it, you know, but you just count it that. You, you choose to trust the Lord in the midst of that thing. And that brings patience, amen, to this cheerful endurance. And out of that patience comes perfect wanting nothing. Praise the Lord. Wanting nothing. It's not, it doesn't say uh, needing nothing. It says your desires will be met. Not just your needs. This is about what your desire, what your heart is desiring, what, what God has put in your heart to experience. Right? 
whatever that might be, you've got to have patience and you've got to be cheerfully enduring this thing so that that patience can work the perfect answer that God has for you. Because if you move out of faith, if you get back into disappointment and discouragement and hopelessness, you're sunk. You're never going to see the manifestation. And it isn't because God doesn't have it for you. It says He's telling us how we can achieve it, how we can actually experience it. There is a part that we have to play. So everything about Jesus is subjective and objective. And you need to realize that there's a part we play. And it isn't about us being really good and not ever making mistakes. But it's about us responding to Him. Yes. We have to respond. We have to exercise faith. Confidence is all that is. You don't have to have a great feeling of faith. You just got to keep your confidence in God and not in your circumstance. Amen? Now, one of the promises that, that the mind has a problem with, that's the, the unrenewed mind. One thing that it has a hard time understanding is that you can have what you say. Suzanne mentioned it briefly Sunday, but it's a fact. Look at Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26. God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, that word dominion means to rule, to govern, to subdue, or to manage. Praise the Lord. Sadly, most Christians are not managing much of anything. We're just struggling. But we're supposed to be having dominion. We're supposed to be managing. We're supposed to be ruling. We're supposed to be in charge of this mess. Praise the Lord. So when God first created Adam, He created him as a spirit. His body wasn't formed until Genesis 2 and 7. He was already alive. He was already a created thing. But He was a created spirit. He was in the image of God. God is a spirit. Adam was a spirit. You are a spirit, first and foremost, more than anything else. It's just that we're so, so used to dealing with ourselves as flesh because we relate to ourselves in the mirror and all the other physical ways that we miss and, and, and don't really experience the truth of who we are, spirit beings. You just live in a body, amen? But the reason you're in God's image and likeness is because you were created as a spirit. God, nobody's seen God. Why? Because He's a spirit. And that's what you were created. That's the image that you were created in. And how did that spirit operate? By the Word. Amen. The Word became flesh. He spoke. And it became. Now we were created in that image. In His likeness. So it would only seem reasonable to me that we would then function the way He functions. But we don't. Even though we're spirits, we function like humans, like flesh and blood. Praise the Lord. We let our circumstances dominate us and dictate to us. Amen. Mark chapter 11, verses uh, 23 and 24. Mark 11, <clears throat> excuse me, 23 and 24. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now that's not complicated. Is it? And that's the Lord speaking. But how many of us actually believe it and do it? Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Now that word receive, I looked it up in Strong's Concordance. It's number 2983. You can look it up for yourself in the Greek. It's lambano is the word. And it means to take. You take it. And we have this passive idea about everything that we're just here and he's just going to pour out blessings. And the truth is he's telling us we take it by faith. When you pray, believe it, you have it. Take it right then. But we're so used to everything being physical 
that if we don't have our hands on the actual thing, we don't believe we've got it. Well, then that's not faith. You're not exercising faith. You're not using confidence in God. You're still operating in the flesh. I'm not mad. I'm just getting excited here. Praise the Lord. So, amen. Now, you do the saying. You do the taking. That is believing. And then God brings it to pass. There's no lack in the kingdom of God. We need to start thinking like God. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. If you think this is it, then this is it. Amen? Perception becomes reality. Faith is not a feeling. Feelings are in the natural realm. They're not in the spirit realm. You can't faith a bit with your mind. You can't faith anything with your head, with your G2 up here, your, your intelligence. You have to believe with your spirit, with your heart. You have to have confidence in God. Your mind may believe in the things that you can see, you, you can touch, you can taste, you can smell, you can figure out. But that's not faith. That's intellect. Your heart doesn't participate in those things. Your spirit does not participate in that. Because it isn't flesh. Amen. It doesn't operate that way. Only your body operates that way. Only your soulish realm operates that way. So once you get beyond what your senses can perceive, or that your mind can reason out, you're in the spirit realm. You're in the heart realm. See, and if you think about it, just most of the time we're not there. Most of the time we're, where we can, we're trying to figure it out. If I can't see it, if I can't touch it, if I can't taste it or smell it, or feel, then it's not real. But that's a lie. That's only true for this thing. And this is temporal. What God is trying to get us connected to is the eternal. There's no lack there. There's no, there's no anything missing. Amen. Amen. So we've got to get into the spirit realm. The spirit realm is the taking realm. It's, it's, the, it's the realm where you just, by faith, you reach out and take it because God has promised it. Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not tangible in the way that we think of tangible things. It's real. It's more real than anything here. It's just not something you can touch or taste. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. So, when you... <laughs> praise God. When you believe... God gives it. When you trust God, it comes to pass. You know, God used His faith to create everything. That's the truth. He's a faith God. That's how He operates. Abraham used his faith to become the father of many nations. How did he do it? By speaking. Same way God created everything by faith. He spoke it into existence. Every time Abraham said, I'm Abraham, he was saying, I'm the father of many nations. That's what Abraham means. Even though he was impotent and his wife was, was uh, I, I don't want to say sterile, what was she? Infertile. That's a, thank you, that's the big word I was grasping for. She couldn't produce. And neither could he. But every time he spoke his name, he was speaking fertility. He was speaking, uh, amen, productive. He was speaking life. Father of many nations. Amen. Jesus used his faith to heal the sick. He just said, what do you need? What do you want me to do? Reach out your hand then. Right? Take up your bed and walk. He used words. He feed the multitudes. What did he say? Bring that fish. Bring that, you know, that piece of bread. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this food. Now deliver it. Hand it out. And there's more than enough for everybody. 
Now, they did this all by faith. And Romans says that we have the same spirit of faith. Yes. We're spirits. So we have that same spirit of faith because we are children of God. We are created in His image. And so you develop it by the Word of God. Amen. You don't develop it by intellect. You don't develop it by studying a bunch of stuff. You develop it by what the Word says. Amen. Praise the Lord. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Yes. So you find a promise that applies to what your need is, and then you keep speaking that promise, not the problem, the promise. And it'll come to pass. It has to. I'm not going to tell you how long. I don't know. But it has to come to pass if you don't faint. If you don't give in. Amen. If you, contain, if you continue in your confidence in God, it will produce the perfect desire of your heart. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 8 and verse 18. Behold, I and the children, that'd be us, whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Amen. Jew is not a Jew simply because he has a Jewish mother. Right? He said, you're a Jew because you believe. We are the new Jerusalem. So he's talking to us. We are for signs and wonders. Glory. We were created for signs and wonders. Why? Because we're spirits. Spirits that come from God. Born in His likeness, in His image. Praise God. Matthew 6, verse 33. So the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not tangible, physical stuff, right? It's, a, it's the spirit realm. So seek ye the kingdom of God. Seek that spirit realm, that reality, that truth, and His righteousness. Not yours. His is given to us. Amen? When we were born again, when we were born in His image, we received His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. We're seeking the things, and I, I, I understand that, but what I'm saying in the context of this scripture, we're, we're seeking the meat and drink, or the tangible, when we're supposed to be seeking the invisible, and the tangible will come to us as a result of that. Believe what he said. Believe the word. And it will manifest. When you believe and you act on the Word, when you know who you are, who you really are, you are just like Christ, amen, a brother, an heir, a joint heir with Jesus. When you realize that and you speak from that reality and you recognize the power and the anointing that you have as a child of God, as the offspring of God, Taking dominion isn't that difficult. But you have to disassociate yourself. You have to divorce yourself from the physical in order to operate in the supernatural, in the spiritual. If we come back to doing it God's way, we're going to see results that will shock us. Because we've tried to produce them in the physical. By trying to be, if I get good enough, if I pray long enough, if I fast long enough, then, I'll, then God will use me. That's bogus. He's already made you perfect in Him. That's where we have to have our mind fixed in order to see the realities of this. That's why Jesus was so productive because He only said what His Father said. He only spoke what the Word of God said. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. This is, the, this is the beauty of grace. Not, not just that we get a free pass to heaven. And not just that even when we screw up, God still loves us and, and forgives us. We're forever forgiven. That's all great.
But the, the truth of it is, grace allows us to see ourselves completely different than we ever did before. Because we don't look at this anymore. We're not using this as the criteria of, of how good I can be or what I can do or, or how much God's going to love me or not love me. This thing has nothing to do with that. This thing is just what I said Sunday. It's nothing but a ride. It's a vehicle, baby, that'll take him anywhere he wants to go. That's all it is. Remember I talked about the chariots that he rides? We, that's us. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance. We've been born again, right? We are spiritual beings. Amen. In the image of God. His offspring. And we've been born again to an inheritance incorruptible. We now have an inheritance from our Heavenly Father. And it's incorruptible. It doesn't fade away. It won't rot. It won't decay. It, it, it doesn't age. It's always there. It's always available. Amen. And undefiled. And that fadeth not away. Reserved in heaven for you. Now that doesn't mean that you've got to die to get, and go to heaven to get there. It just means it's in the spirit realm. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of His divine nature having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. It's not talking about sexual behavior here. It's talking about, again, seeking after the meat and the drink when the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, and all those things get added to us when we seek that, yes, Lord. when we make that the focus. Then we get this, our inheritance. Praise the Lord. Don't forget your inheritance. Those are the things that you receive by promise. Hold fast your profession of faith. Amen? Stay in the spirit realm. And don't let the enemy drag you back into the flesh. You are the righteous child of a miracle working God. That is the truth. You were made for signs and wonders. You were made for miracles. And God believes you can do them. Keep reading and speaking His Word and you'll be taken. Praise the Lord. That's, it, that's how it, it works. It's simple. It's, it's, in fact, it's so simple that it's dumbfounding. Because we're used to something, anything that great, that big, that wonderful, that magnificent has to be complicated. It has to be complex. But it's not. He said, a little child can experience that. Why? Because a little kid doesn't care where it comes from. He just says, Daddy, I want a pony. Right? Or Daddy, I want this thing or that thing. He, he isn't thinking about what it takes to get it. He just knows Daddy will get it for me. Right? That's what he's talking about. We're, 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 we spend all of our time like, well, I need, you know, okay, I need $500,000 for something, for business, for this, for that, or the other, whatever. All I can think about is, okay, buy a bunch of lottery tickets because there's no other way, I don't know any other way than I'm going to come up with five hundred grand. Right? It's, it's that or, you know, rob a bank. That doesn't work out real well because we see these guys getting caught every week. Right? I mean, I'm not, it's not, I'm not ruling it out completely, except that I just know, you know, I'm not scared. I'm just nervous, you know, when it comes to robbing. So I'm just not going to do that. But I'm, you know what I mean? We try to figure out how's he going to do it. Does, you don't need to know how he's going to do it. You just need to know he will. 
He's your Father. He wants to give you good gifts. He's told us all the things that, we, that pertain to life and godliness. He has given it to us. We, we become partakers by believing it. Amen? We become partakers of the divine nature, amen, by those promises. Not just because they're in there, but because we believe them more than we believe the circumstance. And if you really believe them more than you believe the circumstance, you'll do some stuff that you wouldn't do otherwise. That's called walking by faith. You'll take steps of faith. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. I said it was simple. I didn't say it was easy. I mean, that's the fact. You've got to do it. You just have to do it. And when you do it, you're showing faith. You're exercising faith. You're showing confidence. Now, when you do that, and something negative happens, what do we do? Do we get disappointed? Do we get discouraged? Do we begin to despair? Well, if you do, you've lost already. What you do is you count a joy. And know that patience is working a perfect gift for you. That's called faith. That's confidence in the one who promised. It's not a feeling. Because you can feel lousy. How many, have you ever had a, something really cool happen? And you go like, man, that shouldn't be happening right now because I've been such a jerk. You know, I don't deserve this. And yet it happens. Because it's not based on your behavior. It's not based on you being the best thing you can be physically. It's based on the fact that you are already the righteousness of God in Christ if you will believe that. If you will operate from that reality. And the truth is, the more we operate from that reality, the less this flesh dominates us, so the less we probably do act like idiots and do stupid stuff. That's what grace is supposed to do. It changes us from the inside out instead of the way religion tries to do it from the outside in. When you finally get all your crap together, you get your ducks in a row, you get all your T's crossed and your I's dotted and your life is perfectly in line with whatever is politically correct today, then you'll get your stuff. It doesn't work that way. Read the Bible. These, these people are failures. They're screw-ups in every way imaginable. I mean, they are. And that's why they're recorded in here. So that we can see how God really operates with people. It's, it's churches, it's religion that wants to beat people up and you know, critique them and, and find fault and get them to, you're not like I am, so you must be a failure. Well, the truth is you're a failure. Without God, we're all failures. It's only our trust in Him. And if you can put your trust in Him, anything is possible. In fact, everything is possible. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Now, either we believe this stuff, or we're wasting our time. We ought to be home watching the Hawkeyes. Did they win? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I felt that. I felt the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen. God's got a sense of humor. I'm telling you, God has a sense of humor. Just look right here. Praise the Lord. But look, I'm saying, this is how simple it is, but you've got to do it. You know, we sit around waiting for God to do something. God's done everything He's going to do. He's laid up in heaven, in the spirit realm, everything that we have need of for life and for the spirit realm, for life and godliness. It's all there. We just have to take it. And the only way you can take it is by faith. Praise the Lord. Might as well start. Hey, if it's too big, start with something small. But actually, the truth is, God loves when we get big ideas, big dreams, and, and think outside the box. Because, it, 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 because then we, when, it's, when, when we see it come to pass, we say, that was the Lord. Because there was no way I could do it. There was no way I could make a, a plan or figure out a way or come up with enough whatever to get it accomplished. That was a miracle. That was God. God gets the glory. And we get the blessing. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So set a watch over your tongue. Just say what He says. Yes. When the temptation comes to be disappointed and speak out of that disappointment, just clam up. 
Amen. Don't say anything until you can say something that's in agreement with this word. Amen. And you'll see not only not only will it change your circumstances, it'll change your attitude. It'll change the way you feel about life and about everything in it. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate you very much. Have a safe trip home. Hopefully you'll get there before the snow. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.